the first thing that I would love your explanation on is the difference between MEA and ammonia, because when it comes to, you know, as some people watching this are already familiar with like low toxic hair color or more natural hair yeah. color, you still need an active ingredient to make it, make it do its job. And so I would love right. you just kind of chat about, about the difference in your experience right. between the two, because I know you also use both. I use both. Yes. I know that this is something I feel that's so hot in like the natural clean beauty world is whether to use ammonia or not to use ammonia. And, you know, like we're talking about oxidative dyes, because I know that there's a lot of alternative oxidative dye, you know, coloring with plants and such coming out. But in the land of oxidated dye, you know, you need an alkali to open the cuticle, which is either going to be ammonia or MEA. And in my experience with the both of them, I feel that there's a spot for, or a place for them in the salon for both of them. Okay. So for me with my clients, I want to limit my clients toxic exposure It is one of my main goals. And in order to do that with my salon and like the touch up, you know, hair color that we use, we use an ammonia based hair color. And the reason for that is that ammonia is a gas. MEA is a liquid. Okay. MEA for gray coverage clients, which we have a lot of in my market, totally. it takes 45 minutes for my gray coverage clients, at least 45 minutes. Yeah. With my ammonia-based hair color, I use two brands. I use Big Professional, which is not an organic-based or cleaner company, but they say they claim they're very, they claim to be clean. I actually had a very long discussion with the, the founder of the company. Mm -hmm. And his claim, he uses an encapsulated ammonia in his hair color. And that encapsulated ammonia processes color in 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, shit. And when he, when we were, I know, girl. And the hair, there's a lot of like, there's like a, like a, like an Olaplex in it. It's a natural derived, like plant-based or sugar-based plex, we'll call it, in the color. So the hair still feels good. So it's not like you're blasting it with the high ammonia content. And like the old school hair color where your hair is going to be like a puff. It's not like that. Yeah. So with, he got my brain thinking when he said, you know, ammonia hair color that processes in 15 to 20 minutes, it's not organic based, highly refined though, high quality ingredients, no fragrance. I know how you feel about fragrance. And, you know, he had me thinking like, why is this safe? Like, why are you claiming that this is safe? And he said, well, my color processes in 15 to 20 minutes. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, you're limiting your client's exposure to chemicals. And I was like, Total ding, you know? Yeah, so yeah. when I was looking at my ammonia-free hair color, I'm processing these clients for 45 minutes and I can use all nutrient or big, prof big professional or a different organic cleaner ammonia-based hair color and use a steamer and process my clients in 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it takes the color off, you know, 20 to 30 minutes sooner, which is limiting their toxic exposure to the chemicals. Totally. Because we know you have to have chemicals and oxidative dye to work. There's no such thing as, you know, no tox totally. oxidative dye. So yeah. that's where I come from, you know, a place of touching up what's on your skin processing to do a color shift. Yeah. I use ammonia yeah. and I know ammonia is a gas. It dissipates. It could be offensive to some people. Um, the ammonia colors that I choose to use, the brands don't have a high ammonia content. All nutrient is the one that I use. You don't mind that I use throwing name brand names out there, do you? Oh no. I just so I throw all the brands want out know. there. <laughs> people yeah, that's brand. No. <laughs> okay. So I use all nutrient. I found all nutrient by accident. So I'm uh I love hair extensions. I do them all. And I was looking for an organic based gel color. Ah. And I was like, I found keratin from all nutrient. And I was like, oh, let me try this out. And I started playing around with keratin. And then I started looking at the permanent, you know, dye. And that's how I found them. Nice. So they're, they're a great company. You know, they're, they're about 87% organic, you know, based. The base of the color is organic. And we have great success with it. It has great, great coverage. And that's what I'm going for. You know, great coverage in 15 to 20 minutes, limiting the toxic exposure. Totally. So now I do know that there's a spot, you know, a place that we need clients need gray coverage without ammonia. Mm -hmm. There are, there are sensitivities, um, 
all the things, you know, ammonia can be very harsh and it is an allergen. So I also use original mineral or OA, mm -hmm. which is ammonia free for my sensitive clients and also for toning. I love original mineral for toning. Same. I really do it's, too. It's awesome. So the MEA is a liquid and, you know, uh, most of the time, I don't know per brand, but you need about 25% more MEA in the color than ammonia. Okay. So that also had me thinking too, when I was looking into the MEA, like what exactly is MEA? I can't even say the chemical name of it. I can't even, I'm not even going to try. No judgment here, man. Yeah. <laughs> These chemicals are ridiculous. Yes. The names and how- Chemicals. To yeah, they are ridiculous. So MEA is, you know, a liquid or it's an oil. So there could be a liquid or an oil. But what I also did in my research is that there's not a lot of long-term studies on MEA. And some short-term studies are coming to find that with the oil base that they're causing 70% more hair loss Ooh. than ammonia hair color. Okay. And those were studies coming out of, you know, Japan and other countries that were, you know, other countries do more deep diving into these chemicals than we do. Totally. So that's that I was like, sold, that's it. I'm done. I don't want to worry about it. I'm going to stick with my old school ammonia hair color. It's going to process faster, limit my, color, my clients, you know, toxic exposure, but the sensitive clients, I'm still going to have them in the MEA based colors. Yeah. And they're still, you know, they're, there's a spot for them. Yeah. 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 I, I think, I think one of the things, like some of the key things that you do, Shelly, that I really love, especially you as a salon owner, because you, <laughs> you dig into the, the facts and the knowledge about these things. It's not like you like use color and you're like, oh, yep, I use all organic hair color. And that's what you're like telling your guests. You know, I think one of the things I really no. value about you is you're very transparent and you have options for both wants and needs, which is really cool. Um, and yeah. So that's, that's the thing that I appreciate about you is you're just very real and transparent with people about, Hey, here's what it is. Here's what it isn't, but here's what it is. And here's why. And I totally jive with, you know, in terms that you can limit somebody's chemical exposure, you know, for 15 minutes rather than having it sit on there for 40, 45 plus. Um, Cause that is huge. And then the other thing, I don't know if you guys do this in your salon, but then I don't, we don't do it in our salon either, but a lot of more people ha having, you know, filtration systems, for mm -hmm. any like ammonia gases and things like that. That's a whole nother level, a very expensive level. Um, but some people right. are into it. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? I know kind of going off base here, but. Oh, I think that's great. We do have filters, you know, we don't okay. have a system attached to the salon. Like I don't have a huge, you know, something on top of my roof in a furnace. I don't own the building. I don't have a right to do that, but I do have air filters in the salon to help get rid of those you know, those fumes, because it is a gas, it is dissipating throughout the salon. Yeah, yeah. So I do open the doors, I am conscious of that. And I do have a filter that cool. will help filter that right on out. Nice. Um, yes. I'm, I'm wondering if it would be helpful for other folks watching this, watching this, if they're like, well, oh, shit, okay, so what should I do? Like, do I want to go with ammonia based color? Do I want to go with an ME, you know, MEA? Like, what do I want to do? And what I'm gathering from what you're saying too, is like, well, really list out the pros and cons. Well, for, you know, who, who's, what type of clientele are you serving? What type of services yeah. do you do? And like, what's top mm -hmm. priority? Is it, is it least, you know, chemical exposure and least time, or is it not having like as many fumes? Like, what is it? Exactly. Like, would you yes. From a coach, totally. You have to identify your brand. You have to identify your brand and your audience and who you're speaking to and what your core values are with your brand. Yeah. And once you have that, your non negotiables, you go from there. Totally. So if gas is a non negotiable, like we're propellant free, I will not use any propellants in the salon except for the seventh generation spray sanitizer. <laughs> that's the only propellant that I currently have in the salon. Yeah. But that's a non-negotiable for me. So we don't yeah. have those sprayed around. So those, yeah. you know, micro, micro little, whatever they are, particles are not going into our lungs, but yeah. we got a little gas going into our lungs. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's like, it's a trade-off for me. Yeah. That's where my trade-off is. Totally. So I do think it's like you're, you have to identify your core values and what your brand means to you and doing your research on the ingredients, because you can't just take my word for it. Okay. You know, you have to really know what these are doing. Yeah. And also the impact on the environment and weigh all these ingredients and these things out. 
Totally. And another key, another key thing that I just want to point out mm-hmm. that you had said that I love is that you reached out directly to the founders of these companies and asked them firsthand, you know, what, what is the, what is the pros? What is the cons? Like, what does this mean? So I think that's, I think that's huge too. I ask all the questions. Like I get on a detail, like a, like EDTA, disodium EDTA, tetrasodium EDTA, MEA, like all these little, little ingredients. Like I want it dissected. Yeah. And I do split hairs because I want to know what the cleanest is and the most high performing product. And if it isn't performing, I want to be able to just go down a little notch and a little notch and a little notch and get, you know, where I, where I want with product performance. So yeah, I dissect, I pick it apart. I, I, yes. Hell yeah, Shelly. I dig it. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. And I don't mess with the sales reps because those sales reps, I know more than them and it drives me insane. Okay. I'm not even an expert. I'm like, come on. Yeah. A lot of them don't even know what the environmental working group is. And I'm like, I can't Yes, conversation over. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for saying that because, and I used to do this too, for years. It's like, we put so much like, um, stock into the sales reps, like, oh, well, they will have all the answers. Right. And it's like a sales rep's job isn't to know all the answers. A sales rep's job is to sell you shit. Like that's, that's what they're getting paid for. Um, and I think just bypassing them and going directly to the people who are making it is the the best that you can do. And not that we can always get access to those people. That's not necessarily a thing. sounds like more of a thing with small, small companies, but uh, I I love Yes. I love that you said that. And I love to support a boutique company because I do have access to the chemists. Yeah. Like if, if it's too big of a corporation, I will, my brands will not support that brand. I yeah. want the boutique independent brands. Totally. That's what I go for. That's what I love. Mm-hmm.